Wolverine. It damn straight it is. Disney brought him back. They're gonna make him do this till he's 90. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're looking at celebs and characters who made surprise appearances in Deadpool and Wolverine. Maximum spoilers. You don't just stand there, you ape. Give me a hand up. Number 10, Wumi Masaku. Who said anything about turning back? Wumi Masaku made her MCU debut in the Loki TV series as Hunter B-15, a no-nonsense TVA agent who forms an unlikely alliance with the God of Mischief. At the end of Loki Season 2, B-15 assumes a higher role in the reformed TVA. While the TVA is given a new glorious purpose, it's still not without a few bad apples. Mr. Paradox, played by Matthew McFadden, works off the grid on a mission to destroy Deadpool's universe. And I'd say he's probably a little bit frustrated with his position in the <laughs> TVA, maybe he's a, yeah, he's got a bit of a he's got a bit of a grudge. The TVA eventually catches wind of this unauthorized operation, sending B-15 to Earth 10,005, where she places Paradox under arrest. B-15 also meets Deadpool and Wolverine, although she's more taken with Peter. He's equally smitten with B-15. We can only hope there's a universe where these two are endgame. Renslayer killed C-20 attempted to kill Mobius, threw me in time jail, and tried to take over the TVA. Why would tracking her temp pad be a secret? Number nine, John Favreau. Rule number one, never take your eye off your opponent. <laughs> Deadpool may officially be a part of the MCU now, but that doesn't make him an Avenger. Early in the film, Wade visits Avengers Campus where he's interviewed by Happy Hogan. Jon Favreau reprises his role in an office adorned with Easter eggs. I don't know what I would do without this job. I mean, before I met Tony... In addition to Iron Man helmets, Happy has an incomplete Captain America shield and a copy of Forbes with Pepper Potts on the cover. Wade is disappointed that he couldn't speak to an actual Avenger, suggesting that RDJ doesn't do cameos anymore. This prompts Wade to ask when exactly Happy went from being a chauffeur to head of security. Although Wade isn't recruited, Happy tells him what it means to be an Avenger. He would know since this franchise started with Favreau. Tony sold Avengers Tower, relocating to a new facility upstate where hopefully the cell service is much worse. Number eight, Deadpool variants. The movie can't resist taking a few shots at the multiverse concept. The filmmakers aren't above indulging in this trend, however. Throughout their journey, our heroes come across Deadpool's nicest variant, played by an unmasked Ryan Reynolds, and Dogpool, who won Britain's ugliest dog in real life. Come on, girl! <laughs> She's coming with us! No, she's not. In the climax, the film goes full Spider-Verse with the arrival of Kid Pool, Baby Pool, Deadpool 2099, Cowboy Deadpool, and Headpool, the latter two voiced by Matthew McConaughey and Nathan Fillion, respectively. The ringleader is Lady Deadpool, whose face isn't revealed, but she sounds a lot like Blake Lively. That's because she is. Deadpool Prime and Wolverine shred through the Red Army, although that's nothing a little regenerative healing can't fix. Thankfully, the duo has a secret weapon no Deadpool can resist, Peter. Every Deadpool has one. <laughs> You're a it. goddamn superhero, you! X-Force! Number seven, The Old Mutants. Banished to the void, Deadpool and Wolverine encounter several mutants who we haven't seen in years. Leading the charge is Aaron Stanford as Pyro, who's been MIA since X-Men The Last Stand. Tyler Maine returns as Sabretooth, delivering on the showdown with Wolverine that fans have been waiting for. Ray Park gets tongue-tied again as Toad, although he sadly doesn't get struck by lightning this time. Also back in action are Lady Deathstrike, Azazel, and the Juggernaut. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! They may not be the A-list cast members, but their presence reflects how many mutants fell through the cracks as the 20th Century Fox universe crumbled. We didn't know we were nostalgic for these characters and actors until they popped up again. Number six, Jennifer Garner. Jennifer Garner's Elektra has been a punchline for over two decades. Seeing her revisit the role here, though, we'd argue that Garner always had the potential to be a badass Elektra. 
remember me. Unfortunately, Daredevil gave Elektra little to do before she was unceremoniously killed off, only to be resurrected in a spin-off that also fell short on a screenwriting level. Garner's Elektra is redeemed as she teams up with Deadpool, Wolverine, and a few others. Although Garner plays the role with a straight face, she does get in on some of the laughs. In her funniest moment, Elektra nonchalantly mentions that her version of Daredevil didn't survive, which she isn't too broken up about. Given Garner's history with Ben Affleck, there's another layer to read into. I didn't get your name. I didn't give it. Number five, Daphne Keen. You were always the wrong guy. Till you weren't. X-23 has always been a fan favorite, and Daphne Keene's portrayal elevated her to another level of popularity. It appeared that Keene's X-Men experience wouldn't extend beyond Logan. Of course, we also thought that Hugh Jackman had hung up the claws for good. Deadpool and Wolverine brings back Laura for another adventure with her father, or at least one of his variants. Jonah, Gideon, Stop Rebecca, Delilah, Stop Victor, Jonah, Gideon. Stop it. Although Laura doesn't have a history with this Wolverine, she sees much of her father in him. She gives the pep talk needed to get Wolverine pumped for the third act. X-23 hasn't lost her fighting spirit, or her sunglasses. Keen initially wasn't sure if she could reignite the same spark, but once the cameras started rolling, it was like eight years hadn't passed. <sighs> you don't have to fight anymore. Go. Go. Number four, Henry Cavill. Searching for a Wolverine replacement, Deadpool travels across the multiverse. One universe contains a comic-accurate short Wolverine, and another sees his patch alter ego at the poker table. Deadpool also clashes with the Hulk, who punches him out of his universe. The standout Wolverine variant doesn't look like Hugh Jackman, but rather the guy who played Superman in the DCEU. I can't be a part of this. Then what can you be a part of? No! Nearly a decade after becoming the Man of Steel, Henry Cavill enters the MCU as Cavalrine. Not interested in Deadpool's offer, it doesn't take long for Cavill's variant to get violent, although he doesn't snap any necks this time. It may be the last we see of this variant, but Cavill has joined an exclusive club that's gotten their feet wet in both cinematic universes. It's not an S. On my world, it means hope. Number three, Channing Tatum. Like I was a fan of Gambit since like, I was a kid, so there's a lot of things that I've been looking forward to getting to do uh, for, for a very, very long time. When it comes to playing Gambit, Channing Tatum has been dealt more than a few bad hands. He was cast as the Cajun mutant in The Last Stand, but the character was ultimately cut. Once X-Men Origins Wolverine came along, Tatum was busy shooting G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra, with the Gambit role going to Taylor Kitsch. Two years I rode in that hell and I never <laughs> In 2014, Tatum signed on to star in a solo Gambit movie. The character was also expected to appear in X-Men Apocalypse. None of this panned out, with the Gambit spinoff getting canceled around the same time Disney acquired Fox. My team did everything we could out there, and a lot of good men went down. Yeah. But not you. We guess it just wasn't in the cards for Tatum. Until Deadpool and Wolverine gave him this hilarious cameo, with a cool fight scene to boot. Number two. Chris Evans. What if we got these powers for a reason? What if it's like some higher calling? A higher calling, like getting girls and making money? Is there any higher? Most of the Avengers appear only through archival footage here. This includes Chris Hemsworth, whose tender moment with a dying Deadpool is repurposed from Thor The Dark World. In The Void, though, Deadpool and Wolverine encounter another Chris wearing a familiar blue outfit. This can only mean one thing, Steve Rogers is back. Well, actually, there was a second option we feel stupid for not thinking of. Deadpool is disappointed to find that this isn't Rogers, but Johnny Storm, who Evans played a few years before becoming the Star Spangled Man. Man, I love this job. Job, huh? The only thing funnier than hearing Evans say flame on again is the character's gruesome fate. Hot take, Deadpool is 100% responsible for Johnny's death. First Ryan Reynolds takes Cap's shield, and now this. <laughs> Before we 
we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Wesley Snipes You don't know me. You don't know anything about me. I'm not human. Like Reynolds' Deadpool, Wesley Snipes as Blade remains one of the best superhero casting choices ever. Along with Elektra, Gambit, and X-23, Blade teams up with the titular duo for an epic battle. Snipes' return brings a handful of things full circle. Long before Deadpool, Blade was Marvel's first R-rated movie. Some mother are always trying to ice skate up here. Alas, the series ended on a low note with Blade Trinity, which coincidentally featured Reynolds. Despite Snipes' interest in reprising the role, this seemed increasingly unlikely after Mahershala Ali was cast as the MCU's Blade. Sure you're ready for that, Mr. Whitman? As psyched as we are for Ali's portrayal, Deadpool and Wolverine give Snipes another chance to do the character justice. He may not be the only Blade anymore, but we're reminded that Marvel's success in cinema started with Snipes. You better wake up. The world you live in is just a sugar-coated topping. There is another world beneath it. What did you think of Deadpool and Wolverine? Did you spot Rob McElhenney as a TVA soldier? We are very sorry for the confusion, yeah, but we're mostly excited. Share any other cameos you caught in the comments below. Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.